You know, we're going to be starting this brand new, just like real quick, one part talk today. And it's called 480 Days. And I was doing some research this week and I found out that March 11th, 2020 is when the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. And today, this Sunday, July 4th, 2021, it has been 480 days since that happened. Now for some of us, like that 480 days has flown by. Like I can't believe my daughter is like one years old in two weeks. It blows my mind. But for some of us, this past 480 days has been very long. It's been a lot has happened in these 480 days. These 480 days were filled with restriction. They were filled with social distancing. They were filled with masks. They were filled with missed weddings, missed funerals, missed uh, birthday parties. Missed, so much stuff was missed or canceled in these past 480 days. You know, 480 days of hopes being crushed, of relationships filled with tension and livelihoods, some livelihoods being destroyed, 480 days. When we reflect on these past 480 days, I think a lot of us, we come to the realization that COVID-19 changed us. It really did. I think for a lot of us, it, it kind of brought into perspective what really matters in life. It brought us into perspective of some of the things that maybe we thought were really important that now we realize weren't that important and the things that sometimes we thought weren't that important, the things that maybe we took for granted are the things that ended up becoming the most challenging because we weren't weren't able to do some of the things we used to do 480 days. COVID changed our church. COVID changed us as individuals. It changed our homes. It changed our world. COVID-19, 480 days. But the exciting part is this, is that we are in a new season. We are in a new season as individuals. We're in a new season as a church. We're in a new season as a city, as a province, as a nation, as a globe. We are in a new season. And so today, what what I want to talk about is, yes, this 480 days has been hard, but what are we going to do in the next 480 days to make some big things happen? What are we going to create in the next 480 days? What are we going to do? Because right now we have this opportunity. We can sit in the past 480 days and wish something was different. Or we can step into the new 480 days that God is giving us right now in this moment. 480 days. What is God going to do? Because I'm telling you, I said this two weeks ago. I don't want to go back to normal. I want to step into the extraordinary that God has for us. Because if we go back to normal, we become comfortable. And oftentimes comfort and purpose can't coincide. I'm telling you, when Jesus was, was on the cross, that was not comfortable. It was not a comfortable place for him to be, but it was his purpose. I think oftentimes we think our purpose has, is supposed to be comfortable. I think the reality is our purpose is not supposed to be comfortable. Sometimes our purpose scares us. It scares us. That's why I think God sometimes doesn't give us our full, full purpose in a moment because he's saying, yeah, you're not ready, bro. Like, I have something big for you, and if I tell you right now, you're going to be too scared. Because I think a lot of the time, we, we want to be comfortable. But I'm telling you, if we want to actually step into the purpose, into the future, we need to stop being so comfortable and start make, taking risks. Start doing things that maybe we've never done before. Doing things that we wish we had done. Today is that time, 480 days, let's do something big together. Let's do something big as individuals, as a church, as a community, as families. Let's do something big. I know for a lot of us, our families right now feel so broken. Next 480 days, let's heal our family. Let's bring restoration to our marriage. Let's bring restoration to our relationship with our children. Let's bring uh, restoration to our relationship with our boss, with our coworkers. Let's restore relationship. Because God is in the business of restoring relationship. And he's speaking to us today, saying it's time to restore. 400 and 80 days, I don't want to go back to normal. Because right now we sit here, 480 days later, fresh start. Right in front of us is this beautiful, empty canvas, and we get to be the artist that God is penning the words. We get to be the artist. What are we going to create in the next 480 days? What are you going to create in your family, in your life? Maybe this is habits or whatever it might be. What are you going to do in the next 480 days? Because right now, we get to create new vision. 
We get to have new ideas. And we get to create new life. 480 days. And I want to share a little bit today about the next 480 days. And I have two things. Real quick, two things that our focus will be this year as a church. This is what I believe God is speaking to me as the pastor saying, this is what I have for this for us as a church. Victory Church on the Rock, 480 days. Two things that I believe will help us as we grow and will help us to grow. Two things. Two things that I believe if we own these things as individuals, we will reap the harvest as a church. If we own these things, we will reap the harvest together. Number one, my first thought today is this single word, engage. Engaging in church is so important. Engaging with humanity is so important. We at Victory Church on the Rock that believe that connection is our passion. We, We are passionate about relationship. We are passionate about connection. We are passionate about coming together and doing life together, meeting the needs in our community. That's what we're passionate about is connection. We are passionate about connecting with other people. We are passionate about friendships, about marriages, and about relationships. Connection is so key to what we do here as a church. And we're not passionate just about attending church, but we are passionate about engaging in church. Not just attending, but being present, but actually engaging. And we're also, we're not here just to be consumers. We're here to be contributors. To not just consume this, we're here to contribute to it. We're not here just to consume Jesus. We're we're here to contribute and bring Jesus to the nations. We're not supposed to just be consumers. The disciples, they didn't sit back and let Jesus do the work. They said, hey, we want to contribute to the future. We want to contribute to what you're doing. And, And we see thousands of years later that this is still happening. We as believers are contributors to the gospel and what God is doing in our nation, what God is doing in our city. We need to be contributors, not just consumers. Hebrews 10, 20, uh, 10 verse 24 says this. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Verse 25, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of the return is drawing near. You know, m- most of us, many of us, we've been missing human connection these past 480 days. And now we have this opportunity to reconnect. We have this opportunity to go over to each other's homes. We have this opportunity to eat meals together. We have this opportunity to smile at each other and not be smelling our own breath. This is the opportunity that we have. <laughs> I found out my breath was so stinky this year. Maybe you did too. I don't know if you've ever like drank a cup of coffee this year and be like, whoa, <laughs> I need some gum or something like that. But connection requires work and effort. Connection is not just going to happen. If we keep living in the habits we formed in the last 480 days, it's going to be really hard for us to reconnect. If we continue to live in the habit of isolation, we're never going to find connection. And it's going to be easy. I'm telling you, it's going to be so easy to be comfortable. I'm telling you, there's moments where I was watching church online. I'm in my pajamas, drinking coffee. I'm like, man, this is the life. It's easy. It's comfy. And I think that's great. Like, I think it's okay. it's okay. But at the same time, right now, it's going to create work to break those habits and create new ones. Create new habits of connection. And I believe that's this 480 days. Our role is to start engaging with each other again. To be praying for each other more than we ever have. To be talking about life. To be talking about some of the things that were hard in in 2020 and half of 2021. As well as be sure, hey, this is what I'm excited about for the future. It's time for us to get excited. I think it's been 480 days where we've just been going through the motions. It's time for us to get excited about what God is doing in our church and in our lives and in our city. Let's get excited about it. It's time for us to reconnect not only to each other, but for some of us to reconnect with Jesus. Some of us this year is the least amount of time we've spent in our Bible than in the rest of our whole life. For some of us, this is the least amount of praying we've ever done. For some of us, this was the most praying we ever did too, though. Like, especially when it started, I'm telling you, I was praying every day, like, just being like, God, like, I'm so confused. But now it's time to not talk, to pray about that, to pray about God, what do you have for us? God, what are you excited about? 
Let's get his heart for our life. Let's see his purpose, his, his point for our life. Let's read and listen in to him. No, because it's going to be so easy for us to attend church but not engage with church. It's going to be easy. It's going to be so easy for us to, to not serve and just show up. That's going to be easy. It's going to be easy for us to just show up to church, go through the motions, and go home. But you know, one thing that I feel like God is speaking so strongly to me, and I felt this way since, since Beth and I came here, is that God is going to bring, bring growth to our church. And you know how this is going to happen? If we look around this room, this is our family. This is our core team. This is our church. And what this means is that if we want to start to experience the growth, if we want to start to see God move, if we want to start to see salvations every week, if we want to start to see baptisms every month, if we want to see that happen, we need to all be stepping in and saying, I'm going to engage with what God is doing here. We have to. We have to engage with what God is doing here. We have to engage. Let's not stop meeting together because the weather is warm. You know, right now, I know that summer is an awesome opportunity because it's hot out. And it's so easy to disconnect in the summer. I want to encourage you. We've been disconnected for a year and a half. This summer, let's have this be a summer of connection. Let's let let this be a summer where we get together, we eat meals together, we have breakfast together, we have barbecues together. We just get to know each other and we connect. Let's let this be a summer of connection, not a summer of disconnection. And it's going to be easy, I'm telling you. It's going to be so easy for us to disconnect this summer. I, I know it is. But I want to encourage you, let's stay connected this summer. Let's recreate connection in our lives and in our church. Let's get to know each other again. And for some of us, with me, let's get to know each other for the first time. I'm excited to get to know you. You know, engaging is not only connection, but it's also giving. You know, when we talk about engaging, it's not just showing up, it's actually contributing. Saying, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give. You know, we just talked a little bit about giving. I don't want to spend a lot of time at this, but Victory Church on the Rock, we believe that giving is our nature. We were created to give. If you look at Adam, right, he gave part of himself to create. I don't know if he chose to, but it happened. But we were created to give. We were created to give. Jesus went to the cross, died for you, died for me. He gave his life for us. And in response, we should be also giving. We only thrive uh, when God's people give of what has been given to them. That's the only way we thrive. Giving and generosity is so key to a healthy church. Don't, I just want to encourage you, don't forget to give. Because when we give, it's not just an act of obedience, it's also an act of worship. You know, when we give, it's an act of saying, God, I don't know what to do. It's an act of saying, God, I trust you. I'm going to give because I trust you. This is an act of worship when we give. It's not just an act of obedience. It's an act of worship. We worship as we give because we give up control. I'm saying, God, I trust you. Because I know giving is hard. I know it's hard to trust Jesus when finances are tough. I know. Let me tell you, I know. One of the biggest things that Beth and I have done to grow our trust in Jesus is give. Now, Beth and I, to be honest, we've never been like super wealthy. Never happened. But one thing we've tried to do to the best of our abilities is be generous. You know, we were in a time, there's this moment where we were like, oh, this is going to be a tough month for us. Our, our car was working, but we, it was like kind of like almost dead. Like we were driving home uh, through, the, through the country and our, our headlights didn't work. So we had our four-way flashers on so we could see the road like every like half second. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know if y'all have ever done that, but I'm telling you that's a scary moment. And we had people flash us like they didn't know. Like we didn't know our lights were off, right? But, you know, and we're sitting there and we're like, we're like, God, like we could sell this car. But then God was like, hey, no, I need you to give it away. And it was running. It just had some problems. So we just gave away our car. And, and we're like, this is like crazy for us to do this because like we shouldn't be doing this. But God said, give it. And we're like, okay, we're going to be generous. And we gave it. Generosity is so key. And trust is so key when it comes to relationship with Jesus. Giving is so cool because we get to partner with God in bringing life and hope to people. You know, God says, hey, partner with me. I'm going to bring life and hope to people. Do you want to be a part of it? Do you want to be a part of what I'm doing? Hey, 
let's get involved. Let's give. And, and so, you know, generosity is so key to, to church and engaging. But engaging, third part of engaging is that engaging is also serving. Serving people is serving Jesus. How we serve each other is how we serve Jesus. And we can see this clearly in Matthew 25, verse 31 to 40. It's a long piece of scripture, but it says this, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, when, then he will sit upon his glorious throne and the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep to his right and the goats to his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will, apply, will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink or, or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? When did we do this? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. We know when we come together as a church and we serve, it's as if we're serving Jesus. You know, when somebody walks in our church for the first time, a guest, maybe it's their first time, how we serve them, how we treat them is how we're treating Jesus. Now, serving is so key to engagement, to connect, to give, but also to serve. To actually start serving. When we go out and serve people, we, are, we need to be thinking as if we're serving Jesus in that moment. Because when we serve on Sunday mornings, we are doing that as if we're serving Jesus. You know, serving is so key to human connection. And, you know, you know Jesus was the, the inc most incredible servant of all. When we, if you read through the Bible, you read through the New Testament, story after story, moment after moment of Jesus serving. Jesus serving, and, and, and we look at that and we say, my prayer for me and my prayer for us is we look at Jesus and say, God, make me more like him. Make me have a heart for people. Make me want to serve. Make me want to love. Make me want to bring joy. Make me want to do this. If you want to connect here at Victory Church on the Rock, maybe you're here, you're new. One of the great ways to do this is by serving. You know, some of my greatest friendships, some of my deepest relationships have come because I was serving. My greatest relationships are people that I served alongside within the church. So if you're looking to connect, you're looking for friendship, that's one incredible way to do it because you get around a small team and you get to know each other, you serve together, you're in the trenches together, and it is beautiful because serving here is our honor. It's an honor for us to serve. And we have so many amazing uh, serving opportunities here in our church. In the next few weeks, we're going to be giving some of those opportunities to you. So if you're interested in serving, uh, in the next few weeks, we're going to give you those opportunities. Because it's going to be amazing as we step into community and into summer. It's going to be beautiful. Again, my th So first thought today was engaged. Number two is the second word that, that I believe we need to do in the next 480 days. Is the second one. It's, it's a, this word, invite. Not only do we engage, but we also invite. We, en we engage with church, but we also invite people to church. And I want to focus on the final things that Jesus said before he left earth. Matthew 28, 18. And then Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You know, the last thing Jesus said before he returned to heaven was about people. You know, he, he talks about himself a little bit, but he says, hey, I've been given all authority on heaven and earth, so you go and make disciples. So you go and baptize people. So you go and share the gospel with people. You go do it. You go do it. You do it. Go bring people to church. Go and baptize people. Go teach people. Go love people. Invitation is key to the gospel. Inviting people to be a part of it. You know, there's a stat that says 82% of unchurched people are, are people who don't 
go to church, who have never gone to church, will come if somebody invites them, 82%. So I know all of us, we probably have friends or family that maybe they've never stepped foot in church before. It says 82% of those people, if we invite them, they will come. And I look at my life and I look at our city, I'm telling you, there's so many people in our city who need this place. There's so many people in our city who need Jesus so desperately. And they're waiting for an invitation. They're waiting for an invitation to be a part of a community. Waiting for an invitation to, to step into a relationship with Jesus. And that's our responsibility as believers. You know, the gospel is not just for us. It's for the world. Go into all the world. Go into Edmonton. Go into your community. Go into your family. Go. And that's what we need to be about here too. Invitation. You know, revival means that to bring something to life that was once dead. I think these past 480 days, I think there's a lot of dead things around us. Might even be a lot of dead things inside of us. Dreams. Desires. Even relationships around us that feel dead. There's a lot of people in our city who, who are walking around and they need Jesus. And I believe as we step into this next 480 days, I believe the revival is coming. That the dead things around us, the dead things in our city, the dead things inside of us, God is saying, I'm bringing life right now. Just the same life that brought me back from the dead, I am bringing life into you. I'm bringing life into your relationship, into your story, into your family, into you as an individual. I am bringing life. And I believe that's what God has for us next 480 days is revival for our city. You know, Jesus is our purpose, but people are our heartbeat. We do this for Jesus, but people are our heartbeat. We are here because of Jesus. He is why we are here. But people is who we do it for. We do it for each other. We serve sacrificially for each other. We connect for each other. We give for each other. That's why we do it. Like we do it for him, but we also do it because people are our heartbeat. People are the heartbeat of Jesus. His last words are about people, not really about himself. Go reach people go preach to people because people are the heartbeat of Jesus and they are our heartbeat as well the broken hurting people in society the broken hurting people in our city the people sitting right here in this room that's why we do it the people maybe who haven't even chosen to step foot in this room yet the people who are watching online the people we work with, the people in our family, the people we drive past on the street, the people we see sitting at bus stops. That's the heartbeat of Jesus right there. The people who annoy us. That's Jesus' heartbeat, those people. Invitation is so, so important. We are passionate about connecting with people. And this summer is a great time to invite somebody to church because we're open. It's a great time to invite somebody to church, invite someone to be a part of what God is doing here at Victory Church on the Rock. Invite somebody. Even next week, invite somebody. You know, if we own these two things, if we own engagement, if we start to engage deeper, if we start to engage more, I believe we will start to see the revival that we've been praying for. I believe that we'll start to see the growth that, that we've been praying for. I believe we'll start to see the people come to know Jesus that we've been praying for, for our family, for our friends. That's, that's what God has for us, I believe, this year, is to engage and to invite. That we will be a church that is highly engaged. A church that serves well. A church that loves deeply. A church that gives generously. A church that takes care of each other. That's what I believe God has for us. And if we're an engaging church, people who show up for the first time are going to want to engage as well. Because they're going to find life here. They're going to find joy here. 
They're going to find peace here. They're going to find family here that they've desperately, desperately been searching for if we learn how to engage better. And I know even, you know, before COVID, I know a lot of us, you know, we were all engaged. It's been a year and a half. It's been a long time. I want to encourage us this summer, let's engage. You know, Beth and I are leading, leaning into what God, we feel God is speaking to us as a church and making decisions based on what we feel God is speaking to us. And I, I think that we will see new people come to church and find Jesus who have never once stepped foot in the church. I believe that we will see people walk in here, broken marriages, broken relationships, broken friendships, and they will find healing in this place. Not because of us, but because of Jesus. And I believe that's what we're going to see this next year. I can't shake this feeling that God is doing something so special here at Victory Church on the Rock. I can't shake it. He's doing something special here. He's doing something new here. I know that, you know, over COVID, a lot has changed in our church. A lot has changed. I know that in the next 480 days, a lot more is probably going to change. But God is doing something new out of COVID-19. Something beautiful. Let's pursue Jesus as our heartbeat with people. Let's pursue Jesus as our purpose with people as our heartbeat. Now I'm going to take a moment here of vulnerability and just share a little bit of what I believe God has been speaking to me. Seven things that I believe we will see in the next 480 days as a church. Now this is vulnerable for me because this is stuff... I don't even know if Beth has heard yet. Because God has been speaking this to me. Seven things. Victory Church on the Rock. 408 days. What I believe God is leading us to. Number one is that we will have to move in, move to multiple services because we won't have enough space in our building to hold everybody. That's what I believe. I believe that we will have at least 10 small groups consisting of at least 10 people. 100 people engaged in small groups. That's what I see happening. 480 days. We will see relationships that took a huge toll during COVID find healing, including marriages, parents, children, and friendships. That's how I believe, 480 days. You know, I believe we will see all of our ministry teams serving on a three-week rotation so that people get weeks off from serving and can just be a part of what's going on in church. That's what I believe. I believe that we will be the go-to place in our community for people seeking help. Not, not, not anybody in this room, but people outside this room will look to us because they know that we can provide what they're looking for. That's what I believe. Number six is I believe we will have a vibrant children's ministry like we once had. I believe that, that I'm telling you, I believe that our children's ministry is going to be best in the city. That's what I feel. And number seven, this is what I believe so strong, is that we will see at least 100 salvations and at least 50 people get baptized in the next 480 days. These are, these are the things that I believe God has spoken to me. And I'm telling you, we can't do it alone. As a church, it's our responsibility to come together and say, God, this is what we're believing for. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. You know, one thing we're going to plan this summer is we are going to have a baptism this summer. I don't know where. I don't know how. It's going to happen, though. And it's going to be awesome. So if you're interested in getting baptized, be on the lookout. We're going to do a baptism real soon. I want to encourage you to be a part of it. It's going to be amazing. So those are the seven things that I believe God has for us as a church. I'll be getting these typed up and, and read out, and we're going to put them up somewhere so we can just keep this in front of us. And God, this is what we're believing for in the next 480 days. 480 days. And I believe that the things the devil tried to steal from us during COVID will become the very things that come back to fill heaven and empty hell. The very things that the devil tried to take away from us, that, God, that the devil tried to take away from us as families, I believe that's going to be these very things that will fill heaven and empty hell. That's what I believe. You know, God has something big for us as a church, and I'm so excited to be a part of it. We get to be a part of it together. And as a church, we're not here as individuals. We're here as a family. We're here as the body. God has something huge for us this year. You know, we, as many of us know, in BC, there's a lot of forest fires happening. And we, this, this is something that's happened for years, and it's crazy. And I don't know if you've ever seen a forest fire a few years later. You see the death, but then you also see the life. And when I picture, when I, when I was thinking about this, I was picturing this. I was picturing so much death. 
which doesn't sound like a good picture. So much been burned down. But then I see something new be starting to grow. That in the midst of death, in the midst of pain, God is creating something brand new. New life. Revival. In the midst of darkness, God is bringing revival. And that's these next 480 days. God is doing something beautiful in our city, in our church. And I'm so excited to be a part of it. And I'm so excited that you are a part of it. And if we want to see these seven things happen, we're going to have to do it together. The biggest one that I feel God has placed so strongly in my heart, though, is that we will see at least 100 salvations this year. 100 new people in heaven. Like, that's what I see God doing. Because, again, it's not about us. Like, it's not. You know, me as, a, as, the, as the pastor, you know, my heart is, hey, let's bring people with us to heaven. Because the only thing that we get to bring with us is not our money, not our house, not our car. The only thing we bring with us is other people. That's what I believe God has for us this year. 480 days. So I'm just going to pray for us as a church. And the team's going to sing one last song and then we're going to close our service. But man, can I just invite you to stand with me? Just pray with me. Father, I thank you that this is the start of something new. God, I thank you that what you're speaking to me and what you're speaking to us as a church, I thank you that it will come to pass in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that we will take advantage of these 480 days of new life, of new joy, of new purpose, of new peace, new life. God, I thank you that you bring beauty from ashes, that the ashes of COVID-19 will blow away in the wind and what will come up is strong trees, strong life, big life, beautiful life. And God, I thank you that as we start to be a part of, as we continue to be a part of what you're doing in our city, God, I thank you that you're bringing life to it. God, today we dedicate ourselves to you. We dedicate ourselves to your vision for us as a church. And God, we thank you that you are doing something beautiful and we get to be a part of it. I thank you for every single person watching right now in this room. I thank you for every single person watching online right now. God, I thank you that you're meeting us right now wherever we're at. And God, I thank you that you're doing something new in our church. Something beautiful. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing this song with the team.